Howdy people, how's it going? Uh, happy Sunday, happy rainy Sunday in New York. In this video I want to talk about gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and uh, share kind of my philosophy of what you really need, what you don't need, and how to just approach your rig, how much gear do you actually need, as, as opposed to, you know, just collecting them like... <laughs> like uh, some kind of hoarder. So guess, uh, get gear acquisition syndrome or guitar acquisition syndrome. Uh, a lot of musicians, instead of spending time practicing and coming up with something innovative, uh, are just collecting gadgets. Look at, look at guitarists like, once again, Brian May. Sure, he has uh, a lot of guitars in his collection, but he has been playing his number one homemade red special for over 50 years. N meanwhile, there are all these <laughs> bands who who bring like 20 different guitars. Like I was watching the Rig Rundown for U2. The Edge has a different guitar for pretty much every single song. So it's like 20 guitars, different amps. So let's take a look at my wonderful specimen of a uh, electric guitar, my Jill 5 Les Paul. It's a great guitar. And while I was playing in this punk band over 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, this was my main go-to instrument. It did everything that I needed. It has nice kind of saturated sound, good for punk, good for like hard rock. Put a tremolo on it. It suit, suited that style perfectly. However, now, the stuff that I'm playing with my current project, I need more single coil clarity, sometimes also kind of loud, uh, saturated sound, but I would never be able to play that kind of stuff with my Les Paul, no way. So I have my Brian May guitars, like this one, this is my backup. So <laughs> this guitar has single coil pickups. I can get the clean kind of spaghetti Western sounds. It's got the tremolo. I can combine these pickups into a series wiring so it becomes a humbucker. And that's what I need at the moment. So how much stuff do you need? How, how many guitars do you need? You need to, if, if you're a well-rounded musician, let, let's pretend you're some kind of a session uh, guitarist. You need guitars that cover different genres. So you would probably need a humbucker guitar. You would probably need something with single coils some kind of a jazz box guitar, an acoustic guitar. There's, I mean, yes, you can, you can, you can get like a, a Telecaster, a Jazzmaster, a Mustang, so, so, some, something else. But uh, before you know it, your, 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 your home is going to turn into a music store, basically. So let's take a look, for example, at my pedal board. I actually simplified my setup. Uh, I used to have a different pedal board, but I just decided to start from scratch because uh, the current, my main project just needs distortion. I have my DS1, the Walla pedal, the processor, Boss MS3, and as I mentioned in my video from maybe a month ago, I'm running now in stereo so i have the american sound amp emulator pedal to be able to split my signal and go into a, an actual amplifier and run out of this virtual amplifier so in terms of my gear i was recently playing in this band which broke up a few months ago and in this band we i i just did some I did some innovative kind of sounds. I, I used the freeze pedal to freeze notes and chords and put uh, organ simulator on top of those frozen notes. I also used the looper to, uh, I would record uh, backing parts, like just one chord, for example. I would record it, put it into the looper, store it so that live I could play back that one chord and just, for example, play a solo over that to make it sound like there's more of me than just one of me. My, uh, if you're also curious about my thoughts on 
I'm, you know, uh, becoming this like a guitarist that sounds nice and rich and big. I have a whole series of videos covering that. But that band broke up and I no longer need those gadgets because the band I'm in right now, the main band that I'm playing in, has a horn section, there's a playback track. They're like I don't need to multitask and do all that stuff. So yes, sure, I can just keep piling stuff onto my board, but why? What if something better come, uh, comes out in a few years? I don't want to become a hoarder. I don't want to collect all of these things. And I'm actually selling my some of my stuff, like my freeze pedal, I'm, I'm selling it to my friend. So in terms of gear, in terms of guitars, like I said, if you're a session player, have different stuff, the, uh, different colors, different tools. Now, in terms of backups, if you're a live musician, you need to, you need to be covered just in case something happens. So, in my case, my Brian May guitar. This is my backup guitar, a backup to for my main Brian May guitar. This thing. So I have it with me on stage in case something should happen to it. And stuff happens all the time when you least expect it. Something gets unsoldered. You, uh, you can like pop a spring in your in your tremolo. So many things. You can just drop the guitar. What if you're flying and somebody, you know, destroys your instrument? It's it's very important to have a backup. So that's what I have. I have my main guitar, I have a backup. And it's exactly the same type of a guitar. Or if I'm playing live and I need to play something and drop D, I can use my backup guitar because my main one is a major pain in the ass to retune. So do I need 20 guitars like the Edge for every single song? <laughs> have a different... Uh, different like specific like that type of a telecaster that type of an explorer no with my Brian May guitars I get single coil sounds I can get humbucker sounds and it covers everything beautifully sure it's not as authentic sounding as my Les Paul for that saturation but this is my kind of Swiss Army knife what what what's the one tool that I need to cover my specific project. In terms of my my pedal board, it's modular. Modular meaning that, for example, let's take one more look. See, I have a wireless receiver. Um, this thing, uh, this thing. Let's pretend, you know, this whole Chinese made stuff anyway, so let's pretend my wireless receiver dies What am I gonna do I'm gonna just take take the Cable plug it into the wall pedal bypassing the wireless receiver. Let's pretend my Wawa pedal dies and I've had that happen in the past when your wa this type of a wa dies even if the battery goes It's true bypass meaning that it will still the sound will still go through. It's not going to cut the chain. If it dies completely, you know, I can still get by. It's not an, an essential sound for me. If my processor MS3 dies, that, that would be quite unfortunate, but I still have, you know, my volume control. I can, I can still play something. If my distortion dies, I can, I can just, use the the distortion on the amp itself that I'll be using just crank up the gain and I by the way I always take a spare distortion with me just in case things happen things get unsoldered beer gets spilled on things what if my main amplifier dies that's what I have the the joy American sound that pedal emulator I can just reconfigure my my rig to go into mono 
and then I can just go straight into the board and I can reconfigure it into mo uh, into the mono sound with just a simple simple <laughs> button press so I'm I'm covered if my whole pedal board gets disassembled like I'm flying somewhere and they just take the whole thing apart I can run all of my pedals off of batteries and my processor off of an adapter which I take with me all the time I always have a spare adapter and that's the beauty of of uh, pedal boards sometimes over a processor because a processor is just one self-contained everything if that thing goes if somebody spills beer on your on your processor if the power supply gets fried or if it gets stolen happens happens as well right you are stuck with absolutely nothing <laughs> you don't even have an amp if you're going direct you just uh, what are you gonna do think of of basically backups for everything configure configure your rig in such a way that if something goes you can quickly rewire it so that you can still play the show somehow for me if if i have absolutely nothing just my guitar and cable and an amp i can still play i can still play something it's not going to have all the nuances that i spent countless hours dialing in but i still have that so, in short, don't be a hoarder. Think for what you need for the moment. You don't need 20 different guitars. You just need, for this current situation, this current project of yours, you need the right tool, a backup for that tool. And uh, that's it. <laughs> and I uh, just wanted to tell you that this this kind of video was inspired by there's a youtube channel called five watt world and the the guy i think his name is keith is talking about exactly that like how many how many guitars do i need get rid of all your stuff you don't need this guitar i'm never getting rid of my les paul because it's signed by les paul himself however at the moment there's absolutely no use for it i I don't play that type of music anymore. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for uh, watching. Bye-bye.